What is up everyone, welcome to a brand new review. Today I'm discussing The Vanishing of Sydney Hall, a brand new A24 film, which if you don't know who A24 is, they do some fantastic films. They pick up other films like It Comes at Night, The Disaster Artist, and tons of others that you guys have probably all seen. And I think they're one of the best production companies out there right now for picking up small indie films. And you can say that I was pretty excited going into The Vanishing of Sydney Hall, given I have no idea what this film was about prior to the, watching this film and going in to see it. I saw the screener, I went and watched it, and I was excited to see this just knowing that A24 had developed this. Again, I said, I had no expectations. I didn't see any of the reviews, any reactions. I, I barely even heard about the film. I knew who was in it, per se. And The Vanishing of Sydney Hall, it's a fine movie. I enjoyed it. I won't say it's one of A24's best, and I won't say that afterwards I went and looked at the reviews, and damn, people are slamming this film. And it is not as bad as what people are saying. There, There is not that bad as what people are saying. But I will say, there's really no point to this film. It's very much more of a character study that's told in a very particular style of way which in a way is kind of a big risk for some directors to take because the way this movie takes place is that it actually tells a story through three different timelines and all the timelines do concur towards the end but it's very much different timelines which some on paper this might have worked but when coming to the screen it's very hard to edit and put it into that context some films can do it very well this film in particularly I feel like didn't handle it that well and that's one of my big cons with the film is the way that it's structured is you can't figure out how it's told because it doesn't work it works in weird ways and sometimes the things that are being told the flashbacks is don't make sense to what's going to the next scene and usually when a film is being told in this way the flashbacks and the other scenes that the other timelines it's going to will equal and kind of make sense of why it's being shown at this particular moment Particularly, it doesn't. It feels like it's just continuing a different timeline, and I didn't really like that kind of style. To be honest, what really saves this film, and really what made me enjoy the film overall, is the performances in here. Logan Lerman is one of the easily the most underrated and underappreciated actors working today. He's very young and up and coming, but the guy, he has not had that one role yet that is, bam, just pushed him forward. I mean, he was in the Percy Jackson, he was fine. Percy being of Law of Flower, he was fantastic in, but he still has not had that one movie in here, but the guy still gives a really good performance in here. It's a very likable performance, and I like what Logan Lerman does with the performance in here. Now, for me, Kyle Chandler was also in here, and he's great to see pop up, but for me, the one performance in here that steals almost the whole entire film is Ellie Fanning. Ellie Fanning plays Melody in here, and she... I forget how good of an actress she is. I mean, one, she carries such charismatic energy with her. She's beautifully talented, but she fits every character and always pushes it into a new dynamic. She can always bring any range of emotion, but her charismatic charm just leaks out of the screen and such cute charm in it that makes you just love her character in every scene she was in. I wish she was in the film more, to be honest. The relationship and chemistry she has with Sydney Hall, Logan Lerman's character, is just fantastic, and it just oozes off the screen that I wish more of the film honestly focused on them and not just Logan Lerman's character. This film is pretty much about... A kid in high school finding success with a book that he read and then also he gets into an unexpected relationship and that's literally all this film is about like it's a very small touching film but it doesn't hit all the right aspects like I was saying I think it's mostly just because of how the story was told At the end of the film when the film ends you're kind of like okay two hours have passed and whoo Finally, it's over. But like I said, those chemistry parts is the parts that really worked for me. Those moments with the actors is what really worked for me and made the film come to life. Think of the editing and the directing on some of the scenes on how they were going to particularly tell the story would have been a little bit better. I think this film would have easily came into B or A-. minus. For me, it's ranging a little bit lower than those, and it's mostly hitting those ranges because the performances held this film up. Absolutely. The performance is what gives this film what it is. But the story is what really held this film down. I liked the story that was telling. By the end of the film, it didn't leave me pondering or thinking anything. It really was just a character study and more of just watching people do it stuff. I think this film eventually will probably end up on Netflix or Amazon Prime or even Hulu and people will take a liking to it. It's one of those films that you go into, you watch, and you, you can enjoy it and have some enjoying moments to it. But there's certain elements that start to hit at the end of this film that I wish more of would have hit and revelated towards the middle of the film for me to ponder more throughout it, and I wish the film left me pondering and wondering more about my own personal life and making me think about my personal life, but it didn't. It just ended, and that's it. It doesn't make you think. It doesn't make you ponder. Where most A24 films make me continue to think or make me feel inspired or make me ponder and analyze certain things, and this film didn't feel like that. It just felt like a generic 
character study that happens in a film. That's really all The Vanishing of Sydney Hall is. So I think if you were interested in seeing this film, definitely worth a watch. If you ever heard of the film, maybe wait till it goes on Netflix or so. So with all that said, I'm going to give The Vanishing of Sydney Hall a C+. Like I said, if it wasn't for the characters in here, I think this film would have totally fell apart. It's definitely not as bad as other critics are saying. I was reading some of the reviews and I was like, how? Why Why do you think it's that bad? It's an enjoyable film. And the characters and the actors in here really held it up. Ellie Fanning, I cannot wait to see what she does next. I forget how good of an actress she is. Tell me guys, have you even heard about this film? Or are you guys excited about this film? And also, leave down below, let's leave this question. What is your favorite A24 film? This is going to be a really good discussion, so I can't wait to hear about it. And of course, guys, make sure to hit up all my social media links if you guys want to talk about other types of movies. Twitter, Instagram, Stardust. I'm always reacting to stuff on there and tweeting about movies. So that's all really cool. Plus, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button especially if you're new because i love talking movies and that's what the comments are all about is talking movies and meeting other youtubers and even talking to you guys about what some of your favorite films are so that's what we're going to be doing talking down below and of course if you guys want to be seeing some early movies and getting some advanced screens or also checking out other movie news that i don't capture on my channel make sure to go check out sandwich on films down below because i'm a part of this awesome website that does advanced screenings and also gives out awesome movie news so make sure to go check us out down below and of course until next time stay classy mm -hmm.